Just a few days ago, Six Flags finally released their 2024 editions. We got Six Flags over Georgia a couple of days early, but we now have word on Six Flags Great America, Great Escape, Great Adventure, Over Georgia, Fiesta Texas, America, and St. Louis as new additions. Are these good fits and are they good rides? Here are my full thoughts on Six Flags new for 2024 editions. We're going to start with the more minor additions before getting into the bigger ones. The smallest additions, in my opinion, are the two identical ones. Six Flags St. Louis will be receiving The Joker, Carnival of Chaos, and Six Flags Great America will be receiving Sky Striker. Both of these are Zamperla Giga Discoveries, basically super large pendulum rides, both extending over 170 feet in the air. For both of these parks, these are great fits. Six Flags Great America already had a pretty nice flat ride lineup, and adding a ride like this makes them have basically everything. Same with Six Flags St. Louis. Six Flags St. Louis, while smaller, has a very dense flat ride lineup. They used to have Excalibur, which I believe closed a couple of years ago. That was a super unique ride that was kind of like a pendulum, but adding one back to the lineup and one that's over 170 feet tall is great for the park. I'm not sure where this ride will be placed, but I assume it's going to be located by Boomerang or the Boss, which is good because those areas are very open and get less foot traffic than the front of the park. Six Flags Over Texas is also getting a minor addition. The world's first log flume ride is getting upgraded to have an additional drop, making it one of the world's longest. Not a lot of other details were given, but it's great that Six Flags cares about its history, especially at the first park in the chain. This already looked like a decent log flume, so adding an additional drop is great and will get people coming back to this ride. Now let's move on to Six Flags America, which in my opinion is one of the nicer additions. Six Flags America will be updating the left corner of the park where Mind Eraser is located. This coaster has been SBNO since the beginning of the year. This whole area will be getting upgraded to a steampunk area called Steamtown. Think of Magic Mountain's Scream Punk area where Twisted Colossus is. The park will be giving Mind Eraser the new Vest Trains, which is a huge improvement. Mind Eraser was regarded as the worst SLC in the States, so upgrading it to eliminate headbanging is nice. It will still be uncomfortable, but a little better. I hope Six Flags continues upgrading the SLCs, as there are quite a few in the chain. Kong, Mind Eraser, Batman, and Ednor still need the Vest Restraints. In addition, Mind Eraser will be getting a red repaint, a good upgrade from the ugly yellow and orange. It also is getting a new name, as the park said this ride was formerly called Mind Eraser. However, no name has been announced. The website just says Suspended Coaster, and that's probably just a placeholder unless Mind Eraser is actually sticking around. In addition, the Rapids rides and Dodgems are getting upgraded, and a new Zamperla Nebulas is being added to fit the steampunk theme. While these rides aren't fantastic, they are definitely visually appealing. Based on the videos, this area looked like the worst area in the park. It was dated and felt run down. Retheming and upgrading the rides in this area will be a massive improvement for Six Flags America, and I hope the chain continues to do this with other parks. Six Flags Fiesta Texas, I believe, was the most disappointing announcement. Jeffrey Siebert posted over 60 teasers for this ride, which most believed to be a coaster. However, 2024 is just consisting of a revamp of DC Universe. I love when areas get revamped because they always look great. Take the Boardwalk or Chocolate Town. DC Universe will be getting a Zamperla Nebulas themed cyborg. Also, the area will be getting a small drop tower, the first ride in the chain themed as Shazam, and a small family monorail called the Metropolis Transit Authority. In addition, some rides will be rethemed, and the area as a whole will be visually upgraded. While I would have preferred something else, I'm still excited to see Six Flags upgrading the older areas in their parks. Now we're getting into the coasters. The most minor coaster, in my opinion, is the unnamed Ultra Surf going to Six Flags over Georgia. The park interestingly let the public name this ride. This is the first Intamin Ultra Surf ever built, and the first Intamin in the Six Flags chain in many years. What's cool is that every coaster in the chain this year is from different manufacturers. Take the mock Power Splash and combine it with the Intamin Half Pipe, and you have the Ultra Surf. This is a launch and water coaster with spinning cars, for crazy airtime on the spikes and a super fast ejector hill. Six Flags Over Georgia didn't have a launch coaster before this, and they just removed a water ride for this coaster, so it is a great fit. I'm excited to see the reputation this ride builds, because I would like to see more. It's a good way to get spinning, launch, and water rides all in one, and the enthusiasts will love the airtime. The most surprising announcement was from Six Flags Great Escape. With Alpine Bobsled closed, there was quite a bit of land for Six Flags Great Escape, and they are introducing the Bobcat, the first Gravity Group wooden coaster in the chain. Gravity Group is the master with wooden family coasters, and this is no different. It uses their pre-cut track and has a fantastic layout. 
It shares a near identical layout with timber at Wallaby Rhone Alps in France, so that is the POV you see. After the 55 foot drop, riders reach 40 miles per hour before traveling over a big floater hill. Afterward is a twisted ejector filled double up. This is great for great escape as the park has been lacking ejector airtime. Comet is great for floater, but they really needed another airtime based coaster. I know some people were disappointing that this wasn't a thrill coaster, but you have to remember, this is a family park and a small park. Most rides are family rides, and they removed Alpine Bobsled, which was a family coaster. Bobcat is a great fit. After the double up is a turnaround, which leads into a head chopper filled ejector pop. That then takes the train into the finale, which is a large floater airtime hill, into a turn, which leads into the brake run. I think that Bobcat might be the best one of the Gravity Group family coasters in the States. I haven't ridden one yet, but based on the layout, it looks fantastic, and I'm glad Great Escape finally got a new coaster. Now the biggest addition, and the best. Vacoma is finally coming to the US. We saw this with the Family Boomerangs, Big Bear Mountain, and hopefully Kings Island's next coaster. But Six Flags Great Adventure is receiving the Flash Vertical Velocity, the first Super Boomerang coaster outside of Asia, and the second one ever built. Based on the POVs released from the Chinese one, this ride looks very thrilling. It uses Vacoma's new trains and track, making for a super smooth experience. The ride launches forwards out of the station into a rollback, providing some small negatives. It then rockets up a backward spike before falling back to the ground. Launching back through the station, the ride enters what looks to be the best part of the coaster, an extended dive loop, providing nearly 5 seconds of hang time. The train boosts into a double up, the top of which dives downward. This will provide some decent floater and some great whip in the back cars. Another boost leads the train up a 0G roll before rolling back down the last spike. Then the train does the entire layout in reverse, boosting backward over the two rolling launches. The inversions look super speedy, except for the first and technically the last one, but that's good because it provides 5 seconds of hang time. Launching 7 times on a roller coaster is absolutely insane. This definitely looks like the best addition to the chain. I'm worried about capacity at a park as big as Great Adventure, but the other coasters in the park should take crowds away a little bit. Overall, I think Six Flags' 2024 editions are great. I hope they continue expanding in certain areas and renovating other areas of the parks, especially those that are receiving less foot traffic, like they're doing with DC Universe at Fiesta Texas and Steam Town at Six Flags America. I also hope that more Vacomas are built because these rides look insane. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think of Six Flags' 2024 editions. What do you think is the best edition? Make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and have a great rest of your day.